Today we will speak of the equalization of room modes in the low frequency range in this reverend chamber. So for this experiment we will need a few things. First, we will need a loudspeaker, a source of sound with its amplifier. The amplifier is connected to a sound generator, signal generator outside the room. We will use a set of microphones to measure the sound pressure at different positions in the room. The first one is at the uh, corner here. You don't see it, but it's just, you see the, the, the back of the, of the microphone stand here. There's a second one, which is this microphone here, and the third one, which is this microphone here. I just took three randomly in the room. I could take any one of these to show the difference of sound pressure in the room at different frequency due to the occurrence of standing waves, as we have seen in the beginning of the lecture. And last but not least, we will use four electroacoustic absorber box. You see one in this corner, there's another one in this corner here. There are two other in the two other corners that you don't see with a, a camera, so this is the back of the camera. Those box are the prototypes of electroacoustic absorber we have developed in the laboratory. They consist of four loudspeaker membrane, all connected to a controller with a power amplifier, a current drive amplifier, which sends back, so which feeds back the loudspeaker with the current. That is a function of the pressure sensed by this tiny microphone here that works for the full loudspeaker. So you have only one microphone and four outputs for, for a loudspeaker. So it's a single input, multiple output control system. And everything is processed in this box that we have set in advance. So we have already designed the filter that allows us to achieve the target acoustic impedance on each of these membrane, which is a frequency dependent impedance. And they are standalone, so they work individually. They are only triggered by this remote control. So now they are off and I can switch them on as I wish. During this presentation, I will do several measurements. I will first do a baseline measurement of the room without the absorber in action. So it will be the baseline configuration where you will see the pressure response of this free microphone as a function of the signal feeding the amplifier. So these are transfer function. Here the signal has a voltage amplitude of 100 millivolts. So I have set the acquisition software so that we see the real sound pressure level at the different microphone position for this exact amplitude. So you will see the actual sound pressure level uh, as function of frequency. And I will switch this off so they are not working now. And we will also see the effect of the absorption by switching them on and seeing the effect on the frequency response in the room. This will be the first experiment that shows, that we show, the effect of the absorber to reduce the room mode's effectiveness at those three microphone positions and then you can extrapolate to any position in the room. There will be a second um, uh, realization and measurement where we will use one single microphone and we will excite the room with several individual room modes. So the first one at 20 hertz, the second one at 26 hertz, and the third one will be at 34 hertz. And I will stop there just for the sake of the demonstration. And I will just travel in the room just to show the effectiveness of the remote stamping with this four absorber on uh, special aspect. 
And the third example experiment will be the time decay of the room modes without and with the absorber, just to show the effect of this sound absorption on the time uh, decay, on the time uh, uh, scale. And I will finish this, this uh, presentation with this free example. I hope it will be, uh, let's say, convincing for you. So, so now I am standing in the, in the room next to the reverberate chamber and I'm uh, using this software. Uh, so here I will just simply show display uh, the free microphone time uh, response. So here there will be the, the waveform of the free microphone recording on the top uh, figure. And below we will have the free uh, frequency response of the free microphone position as a function of the input signal. So here the scale is a bit uh, yes, strange, but I have uh, used a, a scale where we etch, we, we we reflect the actual sound pressure level for the actual excitation, which will, which will be 100 millivolt. So here it, uh, the scale is in dB relative to 2 millipascal per volt. Since I have 100 uh, millivolt, it should uh, represent the actual sound pressure level um, with the 100 millivolt excitation. So let's start with just excitation. So I have uh, designed uh, an excitation uh, signal, which is a broad band. So it's uh, uh, random signal which is band limited from 10 Hz to 110 Hz. I just limit to the very low frequency range just to highlight the effect. So I, I'm uh, just exciting the room which is now visible here. So you see the, the range of the uh, different uh, excitation uh, here which okay is in the range of a few millipascals. So it's less than 90 dB, something like that. So we are in the range of 90 dB per um, in the broadband range. So that means for every uh, excitation, for every um, um, frequency, the, the sound pressure level might be a bit lower than uh, eight, 90 dB. So we will stay in the range of some 80 dB, 90 dB uh, at, every, at different modes. Don't forget that the last speaker that excites the room has not a flat response in low frequency range. It's a, it's a high pass. Uh, filter so below the resonant frequency of the loudspeaker, I should not have uh, as much uh, sound pressure level as uh, as in the, in the medium uh, frequency range. So now I can stop it, and you see the time decay that is quite long with this uh, uh, naked room, and we we'll just uh, compute the the, yes, the the frequency response. So it will be a long processing time. So I will start now. Uh, and it will take maybe uh, 30 seconds to display. So I will just resume. Uh, I'm stopping now and coming back in a few seconds. So you see displaying here the frequency response. So the first average, two average. So uh, after a couple of uh, average, it will uh, kind of uh, refine itself. So uh, you see that the, the slight discrepancy begins to be smoothened by the averaging. And you have the blue, the red, and the green curve that corresponds to the free microphone. So the blue one is the first one that is on, um, on the really uh, right side of your, your screen on the top. The second one, the red one, is the one that is just close to the, the source, at the very far uh, end of the room, close to the door. And the green one is the one that is a bit elevated in the left uh, center of the left uh, uh, part of the room just, I would say, in, in your, in your one, th one third of the screen. OK, now the measurement is uh, terminated. And you see that the, uh, the frequency response shows uh, peaks at the room resonance, so different values depending on the position of the microphone with respect to the mode shape. So for uh, measure, so the first, last, last, first microphone you have, so the four mic the three microphone have the same behavior around the first resonant frequency. And then you have some discrepancy at the second resonant frequency. So here we are at uh, 20.3 hertz, more or less, 20.4, 3, 4. Here the second is at uh, 26.7 hertz, yeah. And the third one is at 34.8, so 35 hertz. And then you have higher modes at uh, 40 hertz, here and here and here. You see the different effect of the different uh, curve. So I will 
just maybe remind uh, these curves. I uh, will just uh, uh, keep them in, in, in mind. So I will start with the mic microphone uh, 4. I will just save the transfer function. Um, so it will be um, frequency response uh, mic 4 no control. And the same for the two other. So I will save this, the mic 5. And the microphone 6 now. And now uh, I will maybe overlay uh, the microphone, um, let's say microphone 5. Uh, and I will switch the, the system on. So now the system is on. I will maybe also uh, use another uh, color for this curve. I will put it in a, uh, so the second one is in red. So we maybe use a, this color here. No, it's not the one. So it was a green, sorry. So it's microphone. Yeah, I need to find it. Fine, here. Uh, so I will use the color range and I put uh, two points, okay? And uh, maybe I will only display the microphone 4 here, no, microphone 5, sorry, so that we can compare the two measurements. And now let's start the measurement. So I'm just comparing the microphone 5 transfer function response, frequency response, without and with the control. So now let's start the measurement. I will stop maybe the recording for a couple of seconds. Yeah, so this is the curve now with the active control on. So you see that the modes uh, resonance, the modal resonance are significantly decreased. So if I'm looking at the first resonance, uh, I was, before I was at uh, uh, 72 dB and now I am about, so not at the same frequency because the resonance has been shifted slightly. So I'm just moving uh, to another resonant frequency due to the shift of the resonant frequency, which is 57.9. So we have a decrease uh, by 14 dB, uh, which is uh, actually not, uh, uh, yes, it, it's, it's a really uh, important decrease at this frequency. So we are speaking of 20 Hertz, uh, which corresponds to a wavelength. Um, uh, of more than 10 meters, so we are able to damp by uh, uh, 14 dB, 14 dB this resonance. The same for uh, the second resonance at uh, 26.7 uh, Hz, which was, which was 75.2 dB, and it is now uh, 26, so a bit less than 10 dB. And the third one, for instance, we were at uh, 72 dB, or 71.7, and we are now at 50 uh, 5.5 dB, which also gives a very huge uh, decrease. And you see the same for all the modes here that are significantly decreased. So we can do the same uh, with uh, the microphone um, uh, 4. So here microphone 4 is here and I will just display the microphone 4 here. So you see, once again, so I will maybe also use the same color code as before. Uh, so it was in blue, so this is um, yes, the, the, the actual measurement, the now, no, yeah. Okay, and the second one will be uh, in light blue, for instance, uh, like this, and also a color. Uh, yeah. So you see once again that we have significantly damped all the room roots resonance here with this absorber's system. And we can also do the same uh, with the sixth uh, micro microphone six. Uh, just to verify that it's working for the free microphone. So it was um, in green, as far as I remember. So let's uh, use um, a picky, so yeah, it's a bit uh, glossy, so I maybe use another one. I will use this one. Okay, and then uh, I will use um, the microphone 6 here. Okay, and once again, no need to uh, give more uh, precision. It's actually, yeah, quite 
impressive how we can dam those resonance. All, all in all, we have a decrease of uh, yes, more than 10 dB in the low, very low frequency range, and still holds in the uh, higher frequency range up to a point where the absorber are not efficient anymore because they are set in a frequency range that starts at 20 Hz and maybe finish around 80, 100 Hz. So that's why the, the efficiency of the absorber is less and less uh, important as we increase uh, the frequency. So now I have um, identified all the room modes, so the resin frequency of the three uh, modes for the different uh, case control of or on. So you see that the first mode that corresponds to the mode 100, so one node along the x axis uh, dimension. The second one is 010, so one node along the y axis. And the third mode is a 110 mode, so uh, two nodes on the x and the y axis. So one mode on the x and one mode on the y axis. And they all correspond to different frequencies. So without the control, you have 20.38 hertz. 26.63 Hz and uh, 34.88 Hz, whereas for the, the case where we have the control on, it's uh, bits shifted towards the low frequency, uh, at least for the first one, 20.13, 26.38, and the third one is slightly switched, so, uh, switched to the higher frequency, 35 Hertz, uh, which might correspond to the fact that the first resonance um, resonator of the active loudspeaker might be set a bit lower than, uh, so between 26 and 20 into 34 hertz, and this is why we have this shift towards the lows for the first two modes and towards the highs for the third mode. So now it will excite the room at this different frequency. So I will um, use uh, the, the generator and I will uh, select the first uh, mode. So we select the sine waves and I will just uh, excite it at 20.38 hertz, which is the first resonant frequency without the control. So I will switch the control off uh, and do the measure and uh, excite the room. Uh, yeah. So we have, uh, you see at the, at the microphone 5 position, which is one of the uh, microphone positions I'm interested in, you see um, the, the effect. So we have uh, here, so we maybe put this uh, here, uh, and I will also maybe uh, display the the RMS uh, value, so you see that you have uh, almost 500 millipascal RMS, uh, so one half of a pascal, so it should correspond uh, to 6 uh, dB less than 94 dB, so 88 uh, uh, dB here. Uh, and if I switch, so remember this, if I switch the system on, so I will just use my remote control now, and I will go from 480 80 millipascal to, now I switch it on, and you see, let's uh, make it steady, we go down to 60 millipascal uh, RMS. So you see the effect on this specific mode is quite impressive, so I switch it off once again, and it will recover the Now, to recover the, uh, the baseline configuration, so with uh, 500, more or less 500 millipascal RMS. So it will take some time to go to the steady state, so you need to be a bit patient to get the steady state response. Okay, let's, uh, yeah, maybe what I will do is maybe change the frequency because the resonant frequency of the active, for the room with the active control is a bit lower than, uh, uh, than uh, 20.38 hertz, so I would switch it on once again, I forgot to do so, and, and then put 20.13 hertz just to have the correct, so here you have a bit higher uh, amplitude because uh, if, you, if you look at the response you see that at 20.38 uh, 20 hertz uh, we are a bit lower than the resonance, so I need to be honest, I need to, uh, to excite the room at this frequency to get the actual uh, value. And here you see that in this case you have 150 millipascal, which is not bad because we have already divided by uh, more than 3 uh, the amplitude, so 3 uh, attenuation of 3 corresponds to 10 dB attenuation, so it's quite nice. So now let's turn it off once again and excite the second room mode, which is, if I remember well, uh, 26.63 hertz, so I will um, once again, I will use uh, the, sorry, 
Yes, this. I have to jump between the, the windows, <laughs> sorry. So here we'll excite at 26.63 Hz, so the second mode. I verified that my remote control, so we have a control off, so you see that the amplitude is quite higher, so we have one, more than one Pascal, so 94 dB at this resonant frequency. Uh, so yes, 1.16 Pascal, 1.15 Pascal, let's say. And now if I'm switch the air absorber on with the same frequency and I excite now to the good frequency which is 26.38 I'm sticking to 333 millipascal so once again I have divided by 3 or more than 3 the amplitude so 10 dB attenuation which is also coherent with what I've seen on the frequency response so let's switch it off once again and take the third example, which is the 34.80 Hz extension, so the third mode. I can even hear it with my ear uh, outside the room. I don't know if you hear it. So here I have once again something like a bit less than one Pascal at this uh, position. So let's uh, keep uh, yes, 880 millipascal and then uh, let's switch the control on, so 880, and I'm going to, so I put 35 hertz here, yeah, less than 200 millipascal, so we have four, more than four times less, so four times is quite impressive, uh, so it's 12 dB attenuation, so even more than 12 dB, so we have even less than one, yes, one, 185 millipascal. We have uh, yeah, even almost five, uh, a factor of five attenuation, which is really impressive uh, here. So we have quite a good result uh, of this absorption at this position. So now we have seen the frequency response. Let's see with the special response. So we have some hint on the special response because we have seen three different microphones, but I will do the same experiment by moving one microphone. So I will take the number five and moving across the room at uh, the three different resonant frequency. So we start. Um, so we start at uh, the baseline uh, configuration. So with the system uh, off. So we start at twenty. Yeah. And maybe I will. I will keep this one. So I will keep only the, the last. Uh, the last one. Uh, so I'm taking the thirty-four point eighty hertz uh, resonant frequency. So with the control off, and we'll go inside the room. And uh, so we will still have this figure here in, in front of you. So you will see the, the pressure variation as I walk along the, the room. So here we are on the 110 mode. So I will have uh, four, um, four, co so the, the, the four antinodes corresponds to the four wage, wages on the, on the four sides of the room. And you have two nodes at the center of the room, so two lines in the center of the room that, that corresponds to the zero of pressure. So we travel along the room and you see the pressure, the waveform of pressure that will vary as I will walk inside the room. <coughs> so here I'm standing in this room. I will just uh, untouch, detach the, the microphone here. So the microphone number five, what I call number five. So I should have maximum of pressure at the four corner of the room. Here I have a node, a zero. I have another anti-node at this position, more or less, here with the same amplitude, maybe a bit higher. I don't really see what's the result here. And if I'm going to the, so here I'm the one on node here. See? From here. To here. And then. And last, just back to at the back of the microphone. Oh, I'm, I don't have enough 
space to go there. OK, so this is what happens for this specific mode. Now, I'm standing here, and I will switch the active control on. And what you should see is a significant attenuation of the amplitude of the wave. And if I'm traveling inside the room now, you don't see much variation. And this happens for all the modes, so I'm able to not only attenuate the frequency response, to equalize the frequency response at each of these microphones. So equalizing is a, is a bit, uh, uh, it, it's not fair. We, we're not equalizing. We still have some discrepancy, but we, we reduce significantly the difference between the peaks and the dips in the frequency response. But we do also this on the spatial distribution of pressure inside the room. So now, the last experiment, I will do this only for the first resonant frequency. So, I will put the system off. waiting for the steady state to be achieved. And I will unplug the loudspeaker. So that's no trick. I don't play with this. I'm just unplugging the loudspeaker. And you will hear and see the decrease, the, the decay of the sound pressure amplitude. OK? So let's do that. And count the time it takes for the sound to be almost the, the waveform to be almost invisible. Three, two. Okay, it takes a few seconds to vanish, let's say six, seven seconds to completely disappear. At this position of the microphone. Now, I will switch the system on, but the drawback, the downside is that now I have reduced by five the amplitude. So I will artificially amplify the excitation outside just to get the same baseline uh, amplitude. So going back to 880 millipascal just by augmenting the signal I put to the loudspeaker. I have even been obliged to multiply by seven the amplitude of the signal. So now we have more or less the same pressure amplitude in the range of 850, 80 millipascal. And I'm switching this off just by amplifying it. So once again, I count, I do a count down, three. it's almost instantaneous. You don't hear the sustain at all. You've seen the drop is quite instantaneous. So it means that not only we are able to um, yes, reduce the, the discrepancy between the peaks and the dips in the frequency response at every position, we also kind of equalize the sound pressure amplitude inside the room, and more importantly, we significantly reduce the decay time of the modes just by adding some more damping at those frequencies, which I 
remind you, corresponds to more than 10 meters wavelengths. So here, 35 hertz is almost 10 meter wavelengths. And we have a device that is less than one meter dimension. So it's lambda over 10 minimum, and it's even smaller compared to the 20 hertz. And we can even go down below uh, 20 hertz with no problem.